the strings on his fiddle dance with the bow. While Gene Van Alstyne waltzes with his past. All evening he'd play fiddle and let me sit there on his lap. Norwegian immigrant farmer. My grandpa was a really cool guy. Charlie Johnson. And that's the fiddle that he played. Charlie's lovingly worn instrument given to his grandson, Gene. I got a lot of stuff in this world, but nothing that means to me more to me than that fiddle. Every time I pick it up, I think of my grandpa and uh, how much he meant to me. The fiddle on which Gene taught himself to play. The fiddle he looked forward to passing on one day to his grandchild. Thought about it a lot. And the fiddle that presented Gene. You can't cut it in half. With a problem. I don't know how I'm gonna pass one fiddle on to 10 different kids, you know, and I wanted each one of them to have the same feelings that I had. What was Gene to do? You'd build a fiddle for each of them. Yes. Which presented Gene with problem number two. You had to learn to make a violin. Right. Before Gene took chisel to wood, he spent three years teaching himself. This is the Menards fiddle. Menards, because that's where Gene paid $8 for the wood for his prototype. But it sounds pretty good. He just has, you know, this ability to see what he wants done and do it. Sherry Van Alstyne never needed to concern herself with the whereabouts of her husband for the better part of the next decade. I think over seven years, I probably spent a thousand hours each year to build those fiddles. That sounds obsessive to me. You got it. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> he is obsessive <laughs> and driven, both. Twice, his tools were nearly stilled. I had bladder cancer. The first time was three years ago. And then it came back, and it came back really bad. Not only did Gene not quit, he shifted to a higher gear. To make sure that these fiddles got to those kids before, before I passed away. 7,000 hours, eight coats of varnish, $2,000 worth of fine non-Menards maple and spruce. People got really a little bit choked up, you know, with all that he'd put into it. Then, on Easter Sunday, the completed fiddles were delivered to all 10 grandkids. You know, you can go and buy a fiddle that's probably as good or better than what I've made, but all that was was money. And, and this was made with love, and I want to leave them something that's special, just like my grandpa did me. Isaiah, Nick, and Cecilia. Elias, Anna, and Kendra. Good job. <laughs> All will vouch for the feelings they have for the gift they've been given. This violin was made by Gene Van Alstyne, especially for my second grandson, Micah Schmidt. Oh yeah, I bragged to all my friends about it. Just like, hey, my grandpa made this for me. Like, oh, cool. No one, no one really thinks it's amazing, but I do. Aaron, here's guessing. A few thousand people watching right now are right there with you. Strings now binding four generations. I just want them to have that legacy. That's important to me. Earlier this summer, so Jean had another small tumor removed. Some of his grandkids are starting violin lessons, given just a little more time. Gene Van Alstyne won't be in his shop much longer, fiddling alone. I think it's just going to be a blast. I think we'll have a jam session. We'll go for two days there. <laughs> Boy, Dupert, Care 11 News. That's what I hope, anyway. Cambridge. Gene says he still hasn't decided who will end up with his grandfather's violin. He's just happy knowing each of his grandkids now have one of their mm. grandfather's violins. You know, he said he wanted to pass the legacy on. Mm -hmm. Well, he created his own legacy. I was about to say. And obviously the kids taken to it, a great way to bond with the family. What a story. Mm -hmm.